Good to see everyone all, at all of our locations, Fort Myers, Gateway, Coconut Point, downtown, C4. Good to see everybody right now in this moment. If you're brand new to Clyde, you're like, hey, who's the guy on the screen and who is he talking to? Uh, right now, all of our locations, we are all connected because of the miracle of technology and we can live stream and all experience this moment together and I'm excited to do that because we're continuing our series that we kicked off three weeks ago called How About That? And uh, you can't say it and not smile, right? Like, cash me outside, how about that? And, uh, and here's what this series has all been about. By the way, if you're like, what's a series? Maybe you're brand new to Clyde. You're like, what's a series? A series is just a group of, of talks that we put together to kind of as a common thought. But if you missed them, don't worry. You're not, like, missing out on anything. I'll give you a quick recap of the last couple weeks. We kicked it off. Week one, we talked about this amazing creation that we live in, earth and sky, and how it kind of reflects the glory of God, and how there's amazing things in our creation that kind of make us go, how about that, you know? And then week two, last week, we had Pastor Kyle Jackson was here. He was a part of Collide last week. We love having Pastor Kyle at Collide. And Pastor Kyle talked about this personal God that really shares his personal experience. He's not far off and distant, but he's real, and he has this, this, this desire to have a personal relationship with us. Well, as we continue, and honestly, as we close out our series, how about that? I asked a friend of mine. This is a friend of mine, Muhammad Amin. Would you please welcome my friend Muhammad to all of our locations? Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I, I got the opportunity to meet you just a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. and um, we, we kind of shared some stories together. We laughed. I ate a strawberry uh, frozen thing from Chick-fil-A. That was amazing. Frosted. Frosted lemonade. That's what it is. It's am amazing. <laughs> that, you, you drink that, you're like, how about that? Um, I didn't know that could taste that good. It's good. Uh, so I was drinking that. You were telling me your story. And I was honestly, I was leaning over the table, like almost drooling out my frosted lemonade because I was just so captivated. And here's why. And here's why I've asked Muhammad to come today is because God's given him um, a story. And he's lived this story and God's impacted his life in an amazing way. And here's what I know. Every single one of us who would say Jesus is our Lord and Savior, we're following him. You have a story too. You have a testimony. And honestly, the most powerful thing that we have is our testimony, is our story. Uh, to be a witness for Christ is to share what we've seen and heard. And so tonight, I've asked Muhammad to come and share what he's seen and heard and how Jesus has impacted his life. So once again, you guys, Muhammad, I mean, and then Muhammad, tell me, like, it, your story starts off. It, it's mm -hmm. not uh, your typical Starting off, it, for, for most of us who would hear testimonies and stories, um, your story starts off in a different place setting mm -hmm. than perhaps White Picket Fence or Southwest Florida or Backwoods, Indiana. Uh, you have a different place setting. Talk about that. Uh, thank you for inviting me first. You're here. welcome, yeah. Thank you. And uh, I look like Indians, so if I go to the, temp uh, the temple right next door, they're going to say, Please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, <laughs> I'm, I'm Iranian, and I'm a, uh, I born and raised there in 1984. In uh, Iran. In Iran, in yeah. Tehran, and uh, I'm a, I was a uh, uh, devout Muslim, and uh, at the birth, they recited the Shahada in my ears when I was born, and then they, uh, they handed me to my mom, and they, d uh, they uh, d dedicated me to, is to Islam at birth. And uh, my family was a little bit different than the rest of the families in the world. They were very uh, devout Muslims themselves. And they were the promoters and advocates of Islam. And we kept a lot of uh, ceremonies and a lot of rituals in our place. And we, uh, growing up, all I did was reciting and memorizing the Quran for hours and hours. And uh, trying to be a, a good Muslim, a believer. And... All of my, uh, all the hours of my life growing up as a kid, I was surrounded by Islam. And my un identity was about Islam, just to learn it and try to fulfill what was, what was asked of me as a Muslim, to keep all the laws in Islam. For example, just to give you an example, uh, when I went to, the, to use the restroom, I stepped with my left foot in because I asked my mom, what's the reason why I should go in with left foot? And uh, she said, 
uh, a good Muslim submits and doesn't ask questions. That's how the Prophet Muhammad did it. So that's why we do it. And I prayed five times a day. Hmm. I fasted 30 days in the month of Ramadan. And, uh, Even as a child? As a child, yes. Yeah. And uh, when I was six years old, uh, 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 my uncle willingly g gave his life in, in the war for Allah, and, and he, w he, he was killed. And um, he became our hero and, and uh, the idol of the family, and I wanted to become just like him. And he was, um, he was, he went to the war, he was injured, came back home, and he was on the crutches, talking to my dad for the last time when was he, he was leaving. And he said, uh, he opened his watch, handed it to my dad, and told him, uh, I'm going to go, and I'm not going to come back. You take care of my kids. And he left, and he died. And he gave his life willingly for the cause of Islam. And uh, we as a family didn't grieve. We didn't grieve. He, he, he died for a good cause, to fight the enemies of Islam and to defend Islam. So we as a family, you lost an uncle. We and did. You, you didn't grieve at all. No, we did not grieve. You, didn't, you weren't sad. You were happy. You were proud of him. We, we were proud of him. We were proud of him. He, he, he fulfilled what was asked of him. Mm. And um, I wanted to become just like him. So on, on that path, I uh, joined a lot of uh, different clubs and different groups of uh, rituals and, and uh, to keep the law to the uh, full of it, full extent in Islam. And uh, my uh, A-plus grade in a school was reciting the Quran, memorizing it, and keep the Islamic laws. I always uh, made, it, made an A-plus there. And uh, I was around teen, uh, I was a teenager, uh, many of you here, that uh, for the second time, I was, I was a Muslim by default, but, but for the second time, I gave, I gave my life willingly to Islam. And I said, I was born to this religion, but now I'm going to choose to be a Muslim. And went to the mosque and... Uh, Every, every evening that I could go to the mosque, partake, and, 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 and prayed. Pressed my forehead to the ground and prayed to Allah. And asked for him, ask, ask him to um, show me his way and, and, and tell me wh what I could do for Islam. And on the top of that, I, um, we as uh, um, Shiite Muslims, we mourn a lot and we worship the dead. We have a lot of imams and leaders in Islam that they died for us or for the cause of uh, Islam, and we, we worship them. And in those sessions, we beat ourselves with chain on our back. Mm. And, um, and th these are the chains here. And you would take these chains and beat yourself mm -hmm. to worship and honor the dead. That is the correct, dead. yes. Someone, an imam, a leader, recites the e eulogy of the dead imam, and we beat ourselves on our back, and we beat ourselves on the chest. The men gather together, as you see in this picture. They get half naked, and they start beating themselves on their chest. And they bruise themselves, and they, um, they start bleeding on their chest. Mm. If you go to the next picture, you can see f that's, for example, what happens. You yeah. beat yourself so much that you bruise your chest, and you start bleeding. And I remember once... When I was um, uh, in nine days, every two, three, every evening for two, three hours, I, in that extent of time, every day for nine days in a row, I beat myself so much on my chest and on my back that on the tenth day, wh when I wanted to go out and beat myself more, I could not. I was so sick and weak. My uh, chest was hurting. When I breathed, my heart was hurt hurting. And I was ashamed of myself. I was so in guilt. And I said, oh, what kind of a Muslim I am that I can't even practice what, what is the least is asked of me. Mm. And um, I, was, I was punishing myself to, read, to get rid of the sins and the guilt and the heavy ladens I had. Mm. And none of it would help me. And um, we uh, also, the other way of we, uh, as Shiite, we um, uh, mourn and, and worship the dead. Our first Imam, Imam Ali, died when he was praying in the morning to Allah with a sword to his head. Mm. 
And um, I remember um, when I was 18, 19 years old, I, just like the uh, man, I uh, knelt or kneeled in front of, a, in front of Im an imam, and he cleaned the blood off of the sword, and he uh, started reciting of the thing. I started to recite, and they landed the uh, sword to my head. And I still have the scars on my head. I still do have, care, uh, have the scars. When, when he hit my head, the blood was running at the side of my head. And when I touched my head, I had hair and, and blood on my head, on my hand. And, um, and you did this to honor them because that's the way he died. He died because a sword went through his head. We so imitate that. We worship imitate, them yeah. wi with the way that we show how dedicated we are to them. Mm. And um, I kept those practices every year over and over till I joined the army. Uh, when, you, when you finish high school, you mandate to join the army. And uh, at the age uh, 18, 19, I joined the army to the Revolutionary Army, and uh, that's me. This is you here? Yes. Oh, yeah. That was, I was, I was. You haven't aged a bit, by the way. I mean, you look <laughs> exactly the same. <laughs> and um, I trained to become a warrior, to become um, a, a, a jihadist. And in, the, in that time of the army, uh, they took the most zealous and the most dedicated soldiers to a trip called uh, uh, On the Path of Light. And that day, they took us to that trip, they took, they took us to the war zone, and we reunited ourselves with the spirit of martyrdom. Mm. We, we went to the war zones that went with thousands of Iran uh, the soldiers, the Iranians, they, were, they, were di they died in the war. We went to those places, we slept in graves to fight the fear, to fight death, and to get rid of that fear we have from uh, of death, and um, to re reun reunite ourselves with the uh, spirit of martyrdom. Wow! And um, age 20, I finished the uh, um, uh, the Revolutionary Army service, came out, and I was wanted to see what I'm going to do with my life. And I always had a dream, always had a dream that one day I will give my life for the cause of Allah, and I'm going to die in a war willingly to be honored just, my, just like my uncle, to fulfill what is asked of me. And, and you were very zealous. I mean, your family was very honored, just mm -hmm. like your uncle. You said you had streets named after your yes. family. Like you when were my uncle and two of my cousins were martyred for, uh, in the war, we were elevated in the uh, community because we, as a as, uh, as Muslim family, we took honor in shedding blood for Islam. And the government turned two of uh, the some of the uh, streets and alleys in our in the name of our family in wow. the last name of our family. So it was an honor for us to um, uh, shed blood and die in, in the cause of Allah. And um, I was um, 23 years old. I called one of my friend. We grow up at age six together. And when I was away for the army and some of the other things, I haven't heard from him. So I called him up and I um, asked him to um, see what is he doing. Uh, what is happening? He said, uh, I, I want to come out and talk to you. I said, can we talk on the phone? But he was pushing to come out. And I said, okay. And um, finally he, he came and I had a motorcycle. He s sat behind a motorcycle. And we started talking about uh, what is going on with me and what is going on with him. And he told me something different that day at, uh, uh, other than uh, my uh, everyday stories that I would, would hear. And I had a very bad mouth. I always cussed. I always, every other word was a cuss word. Mm. And he, that day he was, in, he was just like me, but that day he was, he was different. He wouldn't cuss and he was very mild. And I said, what's wrong with you? What's, what's the matter today? It, he was just kind of, I was weird out with the way that he was behaving. And he told me that uh, he, has, uh, he has converted to Christianity and uh, Jesus has changed his life. And it didn't make any sen sense to me. I mean, we Muslims believe that uh, Islam is the superior way. We are all these prophets that came, pointed uh, all of them from Abraham, Moses, Jesus, all of them. They came to point at Muhammad. So we are the superior way of living. Mm -hmm. We believe we are the completion. How do you, I asked him, how did you downgrade from a, a better religion to a worse? I, that's what I couldn't understand. He kept uh, uh, talking about the miracles of uh, changing of um, Jesus in their lives and what, what, what things has changed about their lives. And uh, 
about uh, their, their relationship has changed with the family and all that. And none of it made any sense. After two hours of conversation, we went to a, we stopped by, uh, I remember still the, hi the hill that we stopped by. We stopped by a, a road that was uh, on the uh, side of a hill. And uh, he told me, look, we've been talking about this and uh, you, you keep countering me. And I just want to tell you that um, God so loved the world that he has given his only begotten son for you. He has sacrificed his son for you. He has shed his blood on the cross for you. And I, I kind of picture what I was going through as a, as a Muslim. I was beating myself and I was, and I was cutting myself and I was shedding my own blood. None of it made any, any none of it helped me. Mm. All the work to help me to get rid of my sins and my, uh, my uh, guilt, none of it helped me. Wow. But when I heard about that Jesus has already done that on the cross, he took the burden, he, took mm. the, he was caught, his sh sh blood was shed for me. Mm. It just, that message of the gospel was so powerful that brought me to my knees. Mm. And I gave my life to Jesus that day. I repent, wow. I repented. Wow. And I, got, and I gave my life to Jesus, and I said, I want to know about him more. So I went home. Nothing was changed. Uh, and I and didn't real quick, before you go back to, to home real fast, um, one of the things you told me in our Chick-fil-A meeting um, was that you said with all your life, there was no assurance of salvation. Th no assurance. We all, they, all of the beatings and all of the cutting and all of this keeping the law, we had one hope. That maybe one of these imams, one of these people that they have a favor with Allah will show up at the day of judgment and give us and merit us and gi uh, grant us the uh, salvation of our sins or let us into the, to the uh, paradise. So it's all this work, all this beating for the hope of maybe you'll mm -hmm. please someone that will mm -hmm. allow you to experience heaven. That but is correct. with Jesus, it was, hey, you have the assurance of salvation. He, he was Jesus already given his life for me. He did it all. Wow. He was already given his life for me. I just needed to believe. It was yeah. much simpler than I, what I was doing. It was much simpler than all I had to go through, struggle throughout the li my life, ultimately die that I may be uh, joining Allah in paradise. And when he told me that uh, uh, he has taken care of the business and Jesus has given his blood, shed his blood, he's poured it, he, ha it, he has given his life for me and for my sins, I said, I want him. Hmm. I want him to be my Lord and my God. Wow. And uh, two weeks later af after that, uh, my uh, the same friend that talked to me about Jesus took me to the church. It wasn't as fancy as this building, of course, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, for the first time, when I walked to the church, I went I, 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 by myself. I wanted to go check, check out the building. I walked to the sanctuary of the building, and something grabbed me, something like a blanket. I can describe it as a brother loving, just hugged me, and I could feel his peace and this tangible, amazing love mm. that I looked around myself to see what was that grabbed a hold of me. And I looked down the uh, stage, and on the wall they had the, uh, the they had a sentence that said, "To respect the presence of the Lord, please take, uh, please turn off your cell phone." And I talked, and I thought to myself, "How could that be? This si this holy God that cannot be contained in this building, mm. this God that is always distanced Himself from me. I was a m I was a sinner Muslim, and Allah was a sinless. He always distanced Himself from me." And that day, they said he, it is in the, he is in this building. At the same time, I thought, that's a blasphemy. That couldn't be right. But at the same time, I could not deny the feelings I had. Mm. He was with me there. Mm. And the church services started, and they sang a song in that day. They said, the, the song was like this. Yes, Jesus, you gave it up for me. You gave up the glory and dignity of heaven to reconcile me to God. Yes, you gave it up for me. You gave up your life on the cross. Yes, you gave it up for me. That was the most amazing song I've ever heard in my life. Mm -hmm. We Muslim gathered together 
we cried and wept and we mourned and we beat ourselves and shed our own blood. That day in church, the Christians were clapping hands and celebrate, uh, celebrating what was happening to them. All of our imams, all of our prophets in Islam, they died and they stayed dead. But Jesus was risen. Hmm. They had hope that we didn't have. They were enjoying that. They were smiling. After the, ch after the church service, they, uh, he took me to the refreshment room and bought me a uh, Persian, Farsi, uh, uh, New Testament. And he gave it to me and he told me, this is the living word of God written for you. And I said, that is weird. <laughs> living <laughs> word of God written for me? How could that be? Anyway, everything was feeling right. When I was at church, I did not want to leave that place. I said, I made it home. I finally found it. I finally found that this is home. I took my, but they didn't let me sleep there anyway. So uh, <laughs> I went and took my New Testament home, and uh, I start from uh, Matthew. It was boring go to go through all those names. This is son of yeah. this, and this is son of this, and this is, I said, <laughs> like this is the living word of me? God <laughs> written for me. <laughs> and after the face page, the first page was over, things turned uh, different. In that week, I went through my, uh, the four Gospels five times. I finished them 20 times. I could not put my Gospel down. It was hot in my hand. I said, this is the best book I have written, I have read in my life. Yeah. And uh, I, came, I came to this particular scripture uh, in Matthew eleven twenty eight. It said, come to me who all labor and have heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And I looked at the book. I said, this, not, this is not right. I said, something is wrong here. How could the author of this book knew that I was laboring and I had heavy laden? I said, this is not right. And how did he know that I need rest? Mm. This restless soul I had throughout my life, mm. this emptiness I had, I always struggle to find where is it? Where are you? Can you once talk to me and answer me? He said, come to me and I give you rest. He touched my soul and it relaxed, and I felt I was relieved. A peace came to my life like no other time in my life. I went through the rigorous, most rigorous rituals in the world. Never produced rest. Yeah. Never produced such a peace wow. that was given to me freely. Take my yoke upon you and learn for me, because I'm gentle. Man, I had... I worshipped a very harsh God in Islam. He was harsh. He was always out there to punish me. Look, I'm out there to, you make a mistake and I punish you for that. This God said, I'm gentle and lowly heart. And you will find for your rest for your soul. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Mm. The yoke that I was carrying for 23 years in my life, it was unbearable. But Jesus' yoke was easy. My, my, my soul had just found rest in him. And I, was, I could not put my uh, Bible, uh, gospel down. I could not put my Bible down. I kept reading it till I went to back to the church. And uh, as a Muslim, I al always sat in the front of a uh, church. I first pew, I was always sitting there as a Muslim to learn and, and uh, be the uh, front runner of the, my faith. When I was a Christian, same thing. I went to the, sat in the front, front uh, uh, pew of the church. And uh, that day, they had a Muslim man with a cloth around his neck. He, has ho he had holes in his uh, throat. He had uh, cancer, throat cancer. He couldn't breathe. He couldn't eat. So they had to pump his stuff with a tube inside and out. Mm. And he was uh, standing there. He was hopeless. He said, he was, I was sick. I was, I was diagnosed with this cancer. I spent all of my money in, in with the doctors, and I spent all of my money in, in the shrines, and there's no, there was no hope for me. The doctor said, you, we will have another week or two, or maybe a month. Go leave that with your, fam with your family. He was going home, and he sees the cross on the top of the building in the church. And the door, it was a Friday, the door was open. He, he walks into the church, and... There's a bunch of Christians inside the, that church. He tells them the story. He says, guys, I'm dying. There's no hope. He was desperately hopeless. He said, look, there's no hope for me. 
I'm dying. Would you guys give it a try? Pray for me. I have begged every imam and every mm. prophet. I have begged Allah. None of them answered me. Mm. Can, I, can I just give a try to Jesus? And they're Christian. They gather around him, pray, lay hand on him, and pray for him. He goes home. He doesn't die. He, gets, he feels stronger and gets better and better. He goes back to the doctor. And um, he, he asks the doctor, what is going on? Doctor, check him up. The cancer was gone. He was totally healed. Wow. And I was sitting in front of the, and I was sitting in the first pew, and I was listening to this man. I said, oh, I know a man that I, I actually did that. I looked in my Bible, and I said, oh, I will heal you. I lay, you will lay hand on any kind of sickness, and they will be healed. And I said, man, this God is proven. Yeah. He is alive. He is he is true. And that day, for the second time, I said, I'm not going to look no more. I'm going to make you, Jesus, my Lord and my Savior. You are the God that I'm going to choose and serve. And, I and after church, I knelt and I said, God, mm -hmm. I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, you are my God. Wow. And I, and I got excited, went home to tell my parents about it. And my dad didn't like the idea, and he kicked me out of the house. And um, I was an active Christian for uh, three years in Iran, evangelized and talked to people about Jesus. And um, finally, the, uh, my, uh, my own family members, my, my mom's cousin, they threatened my life, and the government was after me to persecute me and uh, execute me, and I... Uh, fled or flee the country for my life. Went to Turkey, been there, uh, stayed in Turkey three years and through the United Nations. Finally, I took refuge to America in 2012. Been here less than five years, so. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. Uh, Mohammed, thank you so much for sharing your story. Like this is, it's so powerful to hear someone who, um, honestly, I, I think some people, maybe, you know, those who are listening today and those who are a part of our, our locations, maybe they uh, weren't a part of the Islamic religion, but mm -hmm. they can relate with the, the heavy burden or maybe mm -hmm. feeling that lostness that you felt in your soul mm -hmm. or just that desperation, that hope that you so desired. And maybe as you were talking, they're like, I, I felt that. I know what that feels like. And I think your story is just building our faith to know that not every God is the same mm -hmm. and not every it religion is, not. is equal, that there is, is power in the name of Jesus. And Jesus is the, the one and only, and he is the, 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 the way, only the one under heaven of mm -hmm. which we must be saved. That's right. That, and we've seen that. He is a proven God. He's alive, just like you said. I mm -hmm. love that. And I just believe that tonight, God's speaking right now mm -hmm. to even some hearts mm -hmm. um, and some, some people who are listening, maybe at our gateway location mm -hmm. or Coconut Point and someone, someone at downtown, God's stirring you right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Muhammad, what would you, what, what's your hope tonight as you share this story? I want everybody everywhere, um, but please bow, to, bow your head and close your eyes and think with me. If, if today was a day that you, you made it here accidentally, or you are here, that the friend pulled you here. You may have heard of Jesus. You may never heard of him. But you want to know him. But you want to have a relationship with God. You want to be set free. You want that your soul find rest. The burden, the heavy laden, the guilt, you want to get rid of that. There is an answer. For so Bible said, God has given his only begotten so lo son. God so loved you that he sent his only begotten son to die for you. That he shed his blood on the cross to die for you for your sins and if you are here tonight you want to make the, make him your God you want to believe in him you want to give your life to him 
I ask you to pray this with me. Say, Jesus, I have sinned. I have sinned, Jesus. I am a sinner. But there is hope in you. You, you gave your life, you gave up your life for me. You died for me on the cross that I have a hope. That I'm forgiven. I want you to confess that. To believe that in your heart. To confess with your mouth that you are the Lord. You are my Savior. Jesus, you are my Savior. Thank you, Father, for doing that. Thank you for that precious blood that you shed. Thank you for the unvaluable life that you forsaken, that you sacrificed for us. And if you made that decision, let's talk about it. Come, stop after service, let's talk about it. Let's pray together. Welcome to the family of the Lord. Yeah. It is so easy. It is so easy to believe in Him. It is so easy. He made it so easy for us. Yeah. If you, if you accepted Jesus as your Savior, and maybe you prayed that prayer with Muhammad tonight, I want to encourage you. Um, we're going to break off in small groups in just a little bit at each of our locations. Talk to your small group leader about it. We'll also, uh, maybe your campus youth pastor or um, any of our prayer team, our mentors, just grab somebody. We'd love to talk to you about it and help you with some next steps. Muhammad, thank you so much for joining us. Everybody, would you once again thank him for coming with us today.